What's up, beautiful people? Welcome back to Train Like a Ballerina. Far <sighs> out. This conversation is so much harder than what I thought it would be. Today, we're not doing a workout. We're not in the studio. I'm sitting on my couch, starting an open, honest, extremely vulnerable conversation with you about eating disorders and your relationship with food. Now, I wanted to start this conversation so many months ago, and the reason why I didn't is because it's, it's scary. Honestly, it's scary to open up about my story of struggling with eating disorders, and it's scary because there's a fear of being judged, and there's also a big stigma still in the dance world that eating disorders isn't a thing, that it's, it's not there. And I can tell you, speaking from so much experience, that eating disorders is still very, very prevalent in the dance world. And the only way I can think of, of changing that is to start the conversation today. Now, before continuing with this video today, I want to make you all aware that I am not a certified dietitian or nutritionist. I am a strength coach. I am a trainer. I'm speaking today from my personal experience and what has helped me going from having being hospitalized from having an eating disorder to now having this incredible relationship with food where I look at food in a com completely positive manner. I love food. Um, I am no longer seeing food as a negative thing, but a huge, wonderful part of life. And that's what I want to bring to anybody out there struggling. So at the end of this video today, I'm going to share with you a few really easy tips to start fixing this relationship with food today. But before that, I wanted to quickly tell you a little bit about my story and my struggles in the hope that it's going to inspire you to implement these tips and to start building this wonderful relationship with food for life. So I started ballet when I was 11 years old. By 12 years old, I was taken out of school to do homeschooling and full-time ballet. By 15, my parents put me on a plane by myself to move to Germany to continue my schooling. It's a very vulnerable position you're put into at that age, that very young age. Uh, you're away from your family, from your friends, from your comfort zone, from your mum's cooking. You're in a new country with a new language. And you're also in this highly competitive new environment um, where there isn't much education on what to eat. You're just told to go be skinny and don't put on weight. I had multiple injuries. I was on crutches for nearly a year of my life because I had multiple ankle operations. After a year of being injured and hardly able to walk, I developed an eating disorder. I had anorexia, I was trying to throw up everything that I ate, bulimia, and the worst screwed up part about it is that I didn't even think I had an eating disorder because everybody around me had one, so it was normal. My teacher told me to never eat breakfast. She told me to never eat after 6 p.m., which meant I was hardly eating during the day. I remember fainting multiple times in class. And she told me to go out of the room and get a bite of an apple and come back because I probably had the flu. I experienced girls eating cotton buds to fill up their stomach, 16, 17 year old girls trying to take up smoking because they heard it would suppress your appetite. The list goes on of absolutely horrible ways young women were trying to suppress their appetite and to starve themselves just to be skinny. Now I'm here today as a recovered woman from eating disorders, somebody who has an incredible, now incredible relationship with food telling you, you do not need to starve yourself. You do not need to be on a diet to remain lean. So I want to, through Train Like a Ballerina, try and help educate as many women as I can on how to do that. So how did I make this change? Now, I want to remind you all that my eating disorder started when I was about 15 years old. I am now 27. It took me a lot of work just like any relationship it takes a lot of work and I strongly believe it's going to be a relationship I have to work on for the rest of my life so please don't believe that there is a quick fix don't be watching this video thinking I'm going to give you some incredible tip that's going to change your life today it's going to be work and you need to be consistent and you need to believe that you can do it because I believe that you can so what is an unhealthy relationship with food? I'd like to define that before giving you tips on how to change your relationship with food. I believe an unhealthy relationship with food is anybody on a diet, anybody depriving themselves of any food. A diet comes under the umbrella of counting calories, counting macros, paleo, keto, any kind of diet that is restricting you from things, any kind of diet that's making you feel guilty for eating certain things. If you're a vegan or vegetarian, vegetarian and not doing it for ethical reasons, you're doing it because you believe it's gonna help you lose weight, you're on a diet, 
diet. If you are weighing yourself and counting calories and counting macros, you are on a diet and you have an unhealthy relationship with food. So that's what we need to start fixing before we even start educating on nutrition. The first step to doing that is mending your negative relationship with food. So creating a positive relationship with food. So the first thing I would like you to do after you finish watching this video is to go on any social media platforms and unfollow and delete anybody who promotes diet culture, who promotes being lean and skinny and who makes you feel guilty about being you and who you are. You're responsible of who inspires you or who uninspires you on social media, who you see every day. So if you are seeing people who are promoting a diet, just unfollow them. Just absolutely unfollow them. You get to see who you see on social media. The second thing I'd like you to do is to go and delete any diet tools you have. Now, if you think about it, diet tools such as MyFitnessPal or any app that you're relying on or even a meal plan that someone's given you, you're relying on somebody else telling you what your body needs. A piece of technology telling you what your body needs. You're relying on that piece of technology and instead of relying on that, I would like you to start relying on yourself. So go and delete all those diet apps even if it's scary, even if you re-download them in a couple of days, come back, watch this video, delete them again, and stop using those apps. Now this leads to my last point, practicing gratefulness. Now, in all honesty, I do not meditate, I do not keep a gratitude journal, but I do practice gratefulness. And I practice gratefulness every time I eat food. So I used to look at food as this extremely negative thing that every time I eat it was just gonna make me get really fat. So every time I ate food, I was in this very high stress level, which meant that my body was releasing cortisol. Cortisol is what your body releases under stress. You know, it's a fight or flight hormone. So what would happen is every time I was eating food, I was extremely stressed and it actually can lead to weight gain. So changing my whole mindset of seeing food as not as a negative thing, but as something that's extremely positive. I now spend a couple of seconds before eating any food Saying, thankful, th saying thank you for having the food in front of me, being grateful for having it. I see food as a fuel, as life, as something that's going to let me live my life better and happier and healthier than a negative thing. I can promise you it is going to help, but you need to practice it. Every time before you eat a meal, practice a little bit of gratefulness. All right, TLB family, thank you so much for joining me on this video today. I really hope that these small tips you can implement into your life and they can help you. I also hope that by sharing my story, it's inspired anybody out there. Even if you don't want to start that conversation with other people, start the conversation internally with yourself. Look at your diet and see, is it healthy? Do you have a healthy relationship with food? And make the decision today to start the positive change. Remember that you can have the healthiest diet in the world, but if you don't have a healthy relationship with yourself and with food, then it's not gonna work. I'm so excited to announce that I have some incredible, incredible women on my TLB team who I'll be bringing onto YouTube to help educate you on nutrition, on mindset, on mindfulness towards food. We'll be making those videos in the next coming months. I hope to help and educate as many of you as I possibly can. It all starts with the relationship with yourself though, and this healthy relationship with food. And I hope that I've, yeah, I hope that I've helped anyone out there and yeah i hope to see you guys at the next tlb workout or tlb talks video